Okay, so today I'm going to be presenting Cristalino Lodge. Um, as you can see here from the map on the right hand side, this is where it's located, the map of Brazil. Um, I've, I've cut it off slightly because Brazil is so enormous. Uh, but you can see here that Cristalino Lodge is quite uniquely located in the far south of the Amazon in Brazil. Um, so here you have Manaus um, on the Amazon River, of course, deep, deep, deep in, the, in the Amazon jungle. Um, and Cristalino is located you know, quite far south to that, um, fairly close to, to a couple of small cities in the area. Um, but it is an area that is still kind of less visited um, than the area around Manaus tourism wise. Um, and it feels slightly more isolated than some of the other the lodges perhaps. Um, the luxury eco lodge sits on the banks of the clean, calm waters of the Cristalino River, um, hence the name. Um, and it has quite unusual variations in altitude, which I'll be touching on over the presentation. Uh, so it, these can go up to 40, 450 meters above sea level, which, of course, in South American terms, um, is not a lot uh, when you're thinking about the different mountains in, in, the, in the continent. Um, but it, this does contribute to quite extreme biodiversity and enables year round use of all the trails that they have there. Cristalino Lodge is, also stands out as um, being not only this wonderful kind of luxury eco retreat, but it has pioneered the way in terms of sustainable and responsible tourism um, and conservation, because um, it has this rich history of protecting the rainforest in the area. Um, and it created many opportunities for research and protection of endangered species, um, which I'll go on to as well. So this um, kind of image is one that we, we get a lot of from Cristalino because it has this incredible topography of um, the different hills around the area. You've got this canopy view and the mist that comes off the canopy. Um, and so this goes to show what kind of dense jungle is surrounded by the lodge. They do have four different types of, of forest within this jungle, which I'll go over in a moment. Um, but generally it has all the same sounds and smells and senses that you might find anywhere else when you're in a jungle experience. But it does have quite a few unique experience and aspects to it, which I'll go over. So just to touch on the region a little bit more, um, this region so is, is um, shown to us here on the map by this box um, where Christy Miller Lodge is located. And you can see here that it is an area of extreme importance in terms of con conservation. Um, there's an exceptional number of species in this area, even by Amazon standards. Um, and it makes it one of the region's most ri richest places for observing birds and mammals, particularly butterflies, um, and a lot of the flora, particularly orchids, um, in a primary forest environment. So Cristalino Lodge is set within this big private national heritage reserve, um, primary forests, um, which is just beyond the borders of the Cristalino State Park. Uh, this is an extremely important conservation area of nearly half a million acres. So the park is connected to an other protected areas. And so with this, it forms a huge conservation corridor in the Southern Amazon. And almost 600 species of birds have been catalogued in the Cristalino Reserve, which is half the total species of the Amazon, uh, making it an absolute birders paradise, um, which is why they have these special birding programs as well. And um, this map goes to show um, where it is in terms of kind of where the rivers are in the Amazon. So this map of um, the Amazon and its rivers is of course the whole Amazon that uh, goes into Peru, Ecuador, Colombia and Bolivia. And you can see where Cristalino Lodge is located here and how it's surrounded by these big tributaries that are coming off the Amazon River itself. And I'll um, talk a bit about why that's important in a moment. Um, so the lodge itself, as you can see here, is nestled on the banks of these dark waters, dark, really calm waters of the Cristalino River. Um, one thing to bear in mind is that dark waters tend to attract fewer mosquitoes. Um, so that is another kind of excellent key selling point to, to the lodge. Um, so surrounding the, res surrounding the lodge is their reserve, which is um, 11,399 hectares. Um, and it has been owned by the family uh, who own the lodge for a couple of generations now. So the current owner, which some of you who uh, may have met, is Vittoria de la Riva. 
Um, she owns the lodge and runs the lodge with her son, Alex. Um, and it's also a family business in that her daughter is the architect of the lodge as well. Victoria's father actually founded the city of Alta Floresta, um, which is the nearest city to um, Christina Lodge back in the 1970s. He came to the area um, with the idea to build a community that was self-sufficient, um, using the land around by farming and sustainable practices um, and yeah, create this kind of community. However, the city grew quicker than expected um, with the, um, the abolishment of laws that were protecting the, the rainforest um, and also some mining in the area, um, which led to a lot of the rainforest being cut down um, in this area. So what Victoria's father went on to do was to sell areas, uh, sell land in the city to the farmers and buy the, their farming land off them and create this private reserve, um, which acts as a buffer zone against the Cristalino State Park and the river, um, so that they can, can, can create this wildlife corridor and protect the species and wildlife that live within it. So they've got this incredibly successful kind of conservation program from this. They only started with 700 hectares of land, and now they've got this 11,399 hectares. So Victoria has continued her father's legacy, through testing up the Cristalino Foundation and the Lodge. Um, the foundation funds scientific research into the species and also encourages a lot of um, programs for the children in the area. So they bring children in from the schools of Alta Floresta and other areas in the region um, to teach them about the biodiversity of the forest and the importance of the protection and conservation of the area. Um, in 1997, they also signed a document to create their first private um, national private reserve, this private reserve in northern Mato Grosso, um, which then has brought permanent protection uh, to this area of tropical rainforests. So the um, Cristalina Reserve is home to six different types of forests. So this goes from the evergreen through to flooded um, forest. There's actually a few different maps of this in the Kew Garden website. So Kew Garden um, Foundation or, or organization is a partner of uh, Cristalinos um, in terms of the research um, that they do within, within the reserve. Um, it's quite close as you saw in the map just now to relatively to the Pantanal and Serrada regions. Um, this is great not only for kind of access for, for guests, but also it means that, that this attracts a lot of different species from these different ecosystems, which then also combine with the, the endemic species of the area. Um, it's got this higher terrain from 350 to 400 metres above sea level, which of course limits the flooding in the area, there's access to more trails, and you're more likely to see different types of wildlife. Um, and with this undulating topography, um, you've got a lot of different vegetarian and greater biodiversity. And then these are the names of the three large tributary rivers, which I just showed you on the map, uh, that come down off the Amazon River, um, which leads to a very high level of an endemism. Um, and this is because you've got kind of rivers that animals don't cross or won't cross, and higher hills that animals just can't migrate over. So one of the um, endemic species of the region is the white whiskered um, monkey, which um, I'll show you a photograph late, later on. But this is an, a monkey that you only find in this region, and it's quite easily spotable as well, just in the forest around the lodge. Um, the Cristalina Reserve is divided into different zones for tourism, conservation and research. Um, and it, as I mentioned before, it's, it's really recognised worldwide for its exceptional number of species. Um, as we know, the Pantanal region is probably the best place in South America, really, to see all the different types of, of tropical mammals and birds. Um, and if you go to the Amazon, then you're generally telling your, your clients and your, and your guests that it is generally a difficult place to, to spot wildlife. But this area does have this very high number of species. So even by Amazon standards, um, Cristalino is one of the best places for observing birds, mammals, butterflies, and orchids. So getting to Cristalino. Um, Cristalino Lodge is only accessible by boat. Um, from, um, from, from anywhere, so there, there is no access to the actual lodge itself um, until, until you um, get onto that boat. Um, there are daily flights 
to Alta Floresta from Cuyaba. And these um, would run um, generally when the, the, the timetable was um, as it was at about midday every day. So Cuyaba is located in the northern part of the, just off the northern part of the Pantanal. So it was very well combinable with, with the Pantanal region. Uh, the flight is only an hour and it's with Azul Airlines. And then once you arrive into Alta Floresta, it is about an hour and a half journey um, to the lodge itself. So as you can see, Alta Floresta town is here. This is the very journey that people take. It goes slightly off the track um, on, a, on a more um, kind of jungle track. Then you get to an embarkation point coming down the larger river of Telepires and then down Cristalina River to um, Cristalina Lodge. Um, when guests arrive into Alta Floresta, they are met at the airport by a representative of um, Cristalino Lodge. Um, and then they are actually taken to a hotel in town um, called Hotel Alta Floresta, which is uh, one of the, which is, belongs to Cristalino Lodge. Again, um, set up by the family. It's got these beautiful tropical gardens and pairs of macaws flying everywhere. Um, and here you do the check-in, you have a refreshment, um, you're given your kind of wildlife guides and make sure everybody's happy and okay before then going on um, the transport vehicle and then embarking on the, on the journey to the, to the lodge. And one thing just to mention is that when they are traveling along these roads uh, and they just come off the, the main road, they do go past quite a large organic farm which belongs to uh, Cristalina Lodge and it's where they produce most of the food that they serve at the lodge itself as well. So once you've come up the large um, uh, the large river, the, the Telipires River, you're then coming into the much more calmer waters of the Cristalina River. So you're leaving the hustle and bustle of, of Alta Floresta behind and the big rushing waters of the large river. And then you really start to feel this kind of calm um, come over you and, and start to be immersed in this wonderful experience. You know, you're going deeper into the jungle, noticing a lot more wildlife in the trees. Um, and it has this very kind of beautiful, serene, calmness to it as a boat slows down for guests to really enjoy the views and the surroundings. You know, you're getting to about three o'clock in the afternoon at this point, so you're getting a nice kind of long shadows and, and softer light as well. So you're turning the corner from Cristalina River um, to find this beautiful large floating deck out in the water in this kind of secluded bay, um, which is a really wonderful sight and surprise and looks slightly out of place um, along the river after all the kind of the mangrove banks that you've been spotting. Um, but it's also extremely welcoming and guests can already tell that um, from the design of this desk, the, um, deck that there's you know, a, a good element of, of luxury to this isolated eco retreat. Um, and so the deck where you land to disembark, um, guests are met by um, the staff of the lodge. Um, their luggage is all taken up to reception and guests are left to kind of water up, wander up the walkways and through the sandy paths up to the hotel itself. So the structure of the whole hotel um, is made from this beautiful um, sustainable um, wood um, that they very carefully sourced from another part of the Amazon and made sure there was a lot of reforestation in place um, for that. And all the design um, was done with uh, Vittoria's daughter, who is an architect that has a strong focus on sustainable building materials and also sustainable design. A lot of the design allows for a lot of natural flows of air to come through the buildings so that there is much less need for air conditioning. In fact, there is only one room in the um, in the whole complex that has air conditioning, and that is their presentation room. All of the accommodation rooms, um, as well as the dining room um, and the bar area, these are either very open or they have um, netted windows, um, which are allowed for this natural ventilation system. Um, so the restaurant is, is one part of this, um, this area that, that you arrive to, you arrive to the kind of the bar area um, where everybody comes for, for each of the meals. Um, and you have these indoor and outdoor eating areas um, where they serve some really delicious Brazilian and, and this regional cuisine. As you can see here, it is again beautifully designed with these like large, large wooden spaces. Um, all the meals are generally buffet style, um, but they have a huge range of, you know, really fresh, delicious stews, um, quite a lot of meat and fish dishes, um, but also a huge array of salads and vegetarian base, you know, tarts and, and stews, 
um, and things like that, all with a very kind of heavy Amazonian and also Brazilian influence. Uh, this is the bar, bar area, which they also use as a reception area. So there's no, you know, kind of formal reception desk. You sit down at these tables with your guide to discuss what options are available for you. Um, and then there are kind of daily cocktails available, you know, alcoholic and non-alcoholic. There is an area where you can refill your, your water bottle with um, clean water. There's areas where you always have nuts available to take out on excursions with you as well. Um, and it's there, there's Wi-Fi throughout too, so you can sit here and, and catch up with a couple of emails. Or, and what's really amazing about the, these kind of big communal areas, um, they're never they don't feel crowded. There is only 18 rooms in the hotel, um, and so you know you're, you don't feel like the you know there's a lack of place to sit. But also they're all open and it's surrounded by these trees, and so you're very often find you're you're not just sitting around and relaxing you know you're drawn outside to the families of monkeys the pairs of macaws the toucans um, and the sloths in the in the trees so on the other side of the bar area you have this library where there's a huge collection of natural history books um, as well as a lot of information about the specific flora and fauna to be found in the region and um, they have a lot of information about their um, foundation as well and the different projects that they um that they have going on um, and they have this presentation room where the guide will give guests who have just arrived a presentation on the reserve, on the foundation, on the history of the area, all different species that can be found in the area, especially the endemic ones, um, and different films. In fact, the Cristalino River was featured in one of the BBC wildlife um, episodes not too long ago, a couple of years ago. Um, which was one of the Green Planet episodes, precisely for the giant otter family that lives not too far away from the lodge. Um, so that's something that they also like to show um, to guests when they're staying here. And then another really beautiful gathering area is the Frodian deck where um, uh, guests first arrive. Um, so here they will occasionally have dinner buffet laid out or they'll have a barbecue um, or have an area where pre-dinner drinks and snacks are served with a fire. It's a really beautiful place just to have this kind of different aspect to um, enjoy the surroundings. And it can also, of course, be used during the day if, if nobody want, if anybody doesn't want to go on any excursions, they can use that just to sunbathe, just to relax. Crystalino Lodge does mark itself as well as this place as just kind of a retreat so it doesn't you don't have to go and explore the area every single minute of every day and um, they do have these different kind of wellness programs um, and they do um, advertise themselves as being somewhere where people can just relax um, and soak up the atmosphere have a swim in the river um, that kind of thing so on to the rooms um, as I mentioned, there are 18 altogether, so they have what they call 12 rooms and then six bungalows, and then six bungalows are units in the, in the room right. Um, they, of course, range in standard as well as how many people they can accommodate in each room. Um, they are all completely solar paneled, 20, uh, powered uh, 24 hours a day, um, and they all have their own natural waste systems as well, which are absolutely extraordinary. They are, um, uh, they are managed through kind of organic waste, um, and you can tell where they are through palm trees, absolutely no smell at all. So this goes to show what kind of lengths they have gone to, or efforts they've gone to, to make sure that um, they uh, operate as sustainably as possible. So the leading category to the to the rooms are the standard rooms. These are actually the original rooms to the lodge. And um, the lodge was first built as a birders lodge. While not being kind of a backpacker lodge, it was really quite simple. You know, it was a place where people who were just really interested in seeing the birds and the animals of the area would come um, and not really be fussed about the, the standard of, of, of accommodation. So they would have these eight rooms um for birding groups mainly um and then they kind of developed the whole concept of the of the luxury eco eco lodge from there um so the rooms are quite simple there are four rooms per unit two of these units they've got these you know two doors at the front two doors at the back um and they're quite cozy um they just have these these kind of one windows with small bathrooms but perfectly comfortable and i would say really perfect for anybody on a on a bit of a budget um, but if your clients are, of course, of the more kind of higher grade, um, you're looking at um, this to be your leading categories. These are superior rooms. 
Um, these can sleep up to two guests um, as well, and there are two to each unit, but they do feel much more kind of private um, as they're back to back. So and they've got their own little pathways to, to the doors. They've got these beautiful wraparound decks, um, these very large windows that surround the whole of the front of, of the rooms. They've got the king size bed, which can be separated into two single beds um, or two double beds. Um, and they've got this wonderful kind of um, natural uh, ventilation system whereby the, the, the air is coming through the netted windows and up through this, um, this netted area in the top of the ceiling. Um, they do have ceiling fans as well, but this allows for um, kind of is an alternative to an air conditioning system. This is a better idea of, of the kind of aspect you get from the rooms. Um, again, you've got a lot of animals around in the trees and the and the bushes, you're constantly hearing a uh, cacophony of sound. And they have a lot of capybara families moving around the area as well. And um, so something to bear in mind um, if, if passengers are slightly wary of, of what they might find in the jungle, but the rooms are good enough that they do definitely close off um, from that. They've got doors that are lockable as well. The bathrooms are very large, um, really ample. They've got warm indoor showers and outdoor showers as well, um, completely closed off from, from the outside. The next category up are the junior bungalows, um, of which they have two. These are rooms within their own rights, their own, own unit. Um, they're 60 meters squared and can accommodate up to three guests. Um, these, although they are not the top category, are actually quite often requested as a preference. And this is because they are set back from the path, um, from the main path where people go to their rooms. So they have their own pathway to, to the rooms and they are surrounded by much more foliage and much more trees. They are not visible from the main path. So that's something to bear in mind. They have these beautiful large verandas, um, porch in, in, in the middle, um, in front of the rooms where large Brazilian hang hammocks are often um, hung up. They've got these beautiful large swinging wooden doors as well. Again, netted windows around the room itself. Um, again, they've got this large king size bed, but in this room, they've got enough space to be able to fit three single beds as well. Um, again, we have very large bathrooms and their outdoor shower. And then we're looking at the next category up are the three bungalows. So these are much more spacious at 75 meters and can accommodate up to four guests. Um, these are closer to the main public areas of the lodge um, with slightly less foliage around them. So that's something to bear in mind. But if you do have different families traveling together, then this could be a really good option. Um, and as you can see, they are much more spacious than um, this extra area here where they can accommodate two more beds. Again, with this beautiful deck around the sides and the hammocks. Um, same with natural ventilation system. And then the special bungalow, which is, which is just one bungalow. This is ideal for couples um, traveling, you know, for a special occasion or, or a large family as well. It is very much the same as the other bungalows. You know, it's got this very spacious feel to it. It's very open, but, um, uh, but still, you know, fairly private. Um, but it, the added extra to this room is that it's got its own bathtub outside, so a much larger area um, that accommodates its outdoor shower and, and this outdoor bathtub. Um, all the amenities at Cristalino are these lovely um, luxury Canado amenities made with all natural ingredients and made in Brazil as well. So going on to the tour options, um, when guests first arrive, um, if they are particularly interested in bird watching tours, then they will allocate a, an ornithologist uh, guide to their activities and they'll tailor the excursions much more to the bird watching. Or if they're just generally interested in, in nature anyway, then they will tailor their excursions to, to nature tours. Um, within the forest itself, they have um, 20 kilometers, I believe, of different trails. These can last from anything to two to four hours um, and can be easy to moderate. Um, there are also highland trails, which go up to the 450 meters, um, which can range from medium um, to demanding. Um, and this is something to bear in mind with the humidity and the heat that you find in the jungle. So while the trails themselves might not be, you know, climbing or anything like that, when you're not used to such kind of intense heat, that's why they um, can be slightly more difficult. Um, so these tours will also um, 
be uh, I guess we'll be able to observe different reptiles and amphibians that's much more of kind of the water-based tours um but as I mentioned before it is important to bear in mind that that spotting wildlife in, in the Amazon is more difficult than it is in the Pantanal. Um, but having said that, Crystallino Lodge is in this area of kind of intense biodiversity, um, precisely because of the topography and the, and, the, and the rivers, which means that you're much more likely to spot um, wildlife here than in some of the other parts of the Amazon. Um, and then they do run some other special programs. So they have, um, these are things that can be booked in advance um, and something that you can talk to your DMC about when you're booking Crystallino Lodge. I can also certainly send some more information about this. Um, so they have bird photography, mammal photography, they have yoga and wellbeing programs, as well as educational family trips. So each group is taken with a resident wildlife and bird specialist guide. Um, and then if they're going on the specialist bird watching tours and they will make sure that they have um, one of the bird specialist guides available, um, as well as a local guide. And this local guide can then offer a richer sense of what the jungle has to offer, um, how local people have relied on the jungle for food and medicine and um, things like that for many, many years. Um, one of the things that I found really spectacular when I visited was um, trying to crack it into a Brazil nut case, which is one of the hardest things I've been able, had to do. In fact, I didn't manage it, I had to get the guy to do it. Um, and then they talked to you about the kind of the benefits of, of these nuts um, and how they help in the kind of the whole ecosystem um, and allow many of the animals as well as inhabitants of the jungle to, to live on them for days because they have these incredible nutritional value as well as a, a lot of calories as well. So they'll do this at, any point in time when they come across any of the different edible plants or the different nuts um, and it's a wonderful kind of educational experience altogether. And then this is the example of one of the kind of the views that you get on the, on the high on the kind of the treks that take you higher up into the land. Um, and so the the trails not just take don't just take you along the forest floor. So you're exploring the hills and higher viewpoints of the area. Uh, we have these incredible views over the canopy for miles to give a perspective, but also a chance to see some different wildlife and particularly the different flora that you find in and around the kind of the rocky terrain here. And then one thing that sets um, Cristalino apart from some different other lodges are the viewing platforms um, and canopy towers that they have. So they have these two 50 meter towers um, with different platforms on the way up um, that give the climbers these incredible panoramic views over the reserve. Um, you're taken up there with guides, they have their telescopes, um, they have sets of binoculars that, um, that guests can use. Um, and they, you can stay up there for you know anything from you know 30 minutes to a couple of hours for as long as you want to. Um, and what's really spectacular is going up there for the sunrise tours because they will take people up there for sunrise and dusk mainly. You can go up there any time of day on request, but this is when you get to see the most spectacular kind of activity. You know, as the sun comes up, the mist is coming off the off the canopy. You see all the birds starting to um, to wake up and to fly around. You've got all of these beautiful silhouettes of the big tropical birds, and as well as watching families of monkeys swing through the branches as well. It's well worth getting up for. Um, and it, yeah, it's one of the most spectacular sights I think I saw whilst I was visiting. Um, one of those canopy towers is actually accessible from the lodge itself, so you don't need to take any extra um, boat transfers to get there. So it's just a 15 minute walk through the forest. And then the other canopy tower, you do need to take a boat um, and it's and it's walk through the forest to get there. So that one's better for the evening ride, whereas um, excursion, whereas the one near the lodge is excellent for sunrise because then you're just going straight out and you come back in time for a full breakfast. Now there are of course water-based tours along the Cristalino River um, to see the reptiles and amphibians. Um, depending on the season, depends on what you might spot, but the, the caiman are mostly always out. Um, and you may well spot a, an anaconda if you're lucky or not lucky. Um, you're also taken to see the meeting of the waters uh, between the Cristalina River and the Teliperez River. And this is where you're likely to see lots of like incredibly large flocks of birds, um, particularly the herons, uh, the storks, the cormorants. Um, I spotted a, a very large hawk here with a lizard in its claws. Um, and you're watching this as the sun is going down. It's one of um, again, one of the highlights of the area. 
Um, and then they also have these canoes um, as an option um, that have all of the necessary safety equipment. So you've got life jackets and helmets. Um, Crystallino Lodge will take guests up river for these and allow you to paddle back. As I mentioned before, the river is got this wonderful calm um, waters. So none of this is kind of um, extreme activity, but it is a really wonderful way to, to see the forest and, and, and kind of to be close to nature. And so in terms of the uh, wildlife, you can see, as I, I know I've mentioned it several times, that there is a huge amount of wildlife to be spotted in this area. Um, birds, butterflies, mammals, amphibians. But I just want to go over some of those stats, really, and, and some of those numbers. Um, so of plants, you've got over 1,300 different types of species. This is, um, this is an aracerie here in the photograph. Um, you've got the blue and yellow macaws, so almost 600 species of birds. Um, these macaws and the scarlet macaws are very easily seen from the lodge itself, um, just around the trees. Um, and then you've got all of these incredible colourful species of birds, you know, um, from trogons as well to um, the smaller birds, um, which I forget the names at the moment, but um, I will be sending the, the um, wildlife um, list as well in, in the follow-up. Um, dragons, aracerees, you've got this beautiful heron, um, and of course here you've got the harp eagle, which can be spotted in this area, although it is still, still very rare. Um, so of the 600 species, this is actually equivalent to 500 of all the um, bird species in the Amazon region. Um, so that's really something to, to bear in mind when selling Crystallino. Um, and there are a large number of, of mammals as well, 93 different species identified um, with, a, with a good selection of, of monkey species. Um, this one is the red-handed howler monkey um, and the capuchin spider monkeys. They've got a saki monkey and howlers are all really commonly sighted around. Um, this is a spider monkey baby that was spotted in the area. Um, and then, of course, you've got, uh, as I mentioned before, the families of capybara everywhere. They're, you don't even need to try and spot them. They're just in the grounds of the lodge. Um, Tamandua, so these are tree anteaters. This is the white whiskered um, monkey, which is spotted, uh, not, so which is endemic to this area and can only spot it in this area. Peccary pigs, the white-lipped peccary pigs, which you tend to be able to smell and hear before you see them because they're clacking their teeth and running through the forest. The giant otter families, which, um, which can be spotted further upstream on Crystallina River, mainly in dry season, and then lots of sloth families as well, which you can see here. So as I mentioned, the, the waters around Crystallina are very, very clear. So this makes it even easier for the guys and the guests to be able to spot what they need to see. Cayman are mostly always around um, and very easily spotable. Um, and then of course, you've got tapir as well in the area. Um, which is something that people, I think it's one of the top five um, animals that people want to see in, in South America. Um, so yeah, again, this is, this is a really um, special sighting if you get to see one of these. Um, again, more easily spotable in, in the dry season. And then there are over 1,500 distant species of butterflies together with moths, over 2,000 species. I'm afraid I don't know any of these names of these butterflies, <laughs> um, but it is something that um, experts are really drawn to this area for in particular. There's a lot of research that's done um, for these. They're, and they are all over the area as well, all over the lodge, particularly on the floating deck. You're surrounded by these incredible black and white butterflies and these very colorful um, green and yellow species as well. And then something to note is that a new butterfly species was discovered in June 19, 19, uh, 2019, sorry, so a couple of years ago, um, by some researchers and scientists in the Cristalina Reserve. And because it was discovered there, they named it after the owner of the lodge, uh, Vittoria de Rivas. They've named it Cristalina Vittoria, which she was um, exceedingly pleased with, as you can imagine. So this is an example of the different seasons at Cristalino. So uh, the dry season is generally our summertime going into autumn. Um, and of course, this is best for seeing large mammals. Um, so the tapir and capybara, as well as the birds and butterflies, um, and it can be quite cool. And then you've got the, the wetter season uh, going from December to May, but still you're very likely to see um, a large amount of, of animal species and bird species during this time. 
Um, and then just to quickly run over their sustainability efforts, as I mentioned at the beginning, they, they are, do lead the way in sustainability and responsible tourism. So most of their energy um, comes from these um, solar voltaic um, panels and a generator. All the rooms are 100% solar panel powered. As I mentioned, they've got this biological treatment of, of their wastewater. Um, they've got this ventilation system. They don't have any TVs or minibars. Um, all of everything is um, recycled. There's no plastic um, bottles, water bottles, uh, bio biodegradable cleaning products. Um, they have their own organic um, farm that they bring to um, to the lodge uh, for, for the meals. Um, and they've got this incredible Cristalino Foundation, which um, not only kind of puts a lot of money into the research, you know, they, they have funds for, for research into different endemic species, but they also goes to fun camera traps for, for different endangered species, but they also bring in a lot of these young people from different schools in the region to learn about the biodiversity and the importance of conservation in the area. So this was a synopsis of Cristalino Lodge, um, which I think is just one of the most beautiful places tucked away in the Amazon. It's very calm, very serene, excellent guides, English speaking guides, um, very knowledgeable people, people who you feel like have a very strong purpose um, to look after the area and to really educate people on the area um, and with the added bonus of having a lot of endemic species and a lot of wildlife and bird species um, to see as well. So as always this is the list of our partners at the moment. Um, do give us a follow on Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the next two lodges I will be presenting are Kaiman um, ecological refuge in the southern Pantanal um, and a lot about their kind of on safari and jaguar protection programs and then uh, Posada Trujunsao in the Cerrado region of Brazil a fairly new lodge which um, again is you know we're very lucky to be representing these incredible places really it, it's located in one of the most biodiverse regions in the world um, and they also have a project for uh, the protection of the of the main dwarf so do make sure you register for them. Does anybody have any questions? River dolphins. Um, actually, no, there are no river dolphins in this area. Um, and that is because you mainly find them in the central part of the Amazon region. Um, you can see them certainly in kind of the Ecuadorian Amazon, um, as well as around the, the central region of um, the central region of the Amazon rainforest, but you won't find the pink, pink river dolphins here.